Aloha and welcome to Knitted Paradise, where the needles are clicking and the yarn is squishy. My name is Lucia and you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Pearl of the Pacific. Welcome everybody. Today is October 26th. It's a Sunday. This is episode 46. And today I'm going to be talking about the awesomeness that was Vogue Knitting Live and all of the things related to that. <laughs> be it works in progress or future projects or yarn acquisition. So stay tuned for some awesomeness. Uh, it is still October, so we still have the October swap going on. And if you've received your package, go ahead and post pictures in the thread on Ravelry. I think it's just called the October Potiversary Swap, something like that. Anyway. I want to see all of the cool things that you came up with for your partner or that you received from your partner. So go ahead and do that. Uh, I was able to pick up a piece of my partner's package at Vogue today, so that was really exciting. I'm still waiting on the yarn, but hopefully I will get that soon and get that mailed out to you. So partner, never fear, your package is coming. It may be a little late, but it will come. Uh, that's it for Blow the Conch Shell. Next, oh for now, I have some other things but they're related to Vogue so we'll kind of go into that later. Um, on the island I kind of have two things. One's mostly finished but I mean it could be finished at this point but I've decided to add something to it. And this, the thing you've seen before is my summer fling bag. Ta-da! And this is by eSpace Trico. Okay, it's French so it's probably Espace Trico. I'm at worst pronunciation ever. I'm sorry. But if you search for a summer fling bag on Ravelry, you'll find it. It's a free pattern on their website. And it's out of an unknown yarn that I think is a BFL. It's really pretty. And so I finished the bag and I still have a little bit of yarn left over. And what I'm going to do, because it's out of stockinette, it curls horribly like all stock in it does so what I'm gonna do what they suggested you do is part of like reinforcing the straps I'm doing it because I hate the curling is I'm going to pick up stitches along the edge and I don't know I don't think I'm gonna knit a row but I'm gonna pick them up and then bind them off basically uh, along both sides and that should use up some more of my yarn and also help the curling not curl. Because even if you block straight stock in it, it still tends to curl a little bit and that bothers me. So here's the bag. It's not very big. Um, it will stretch because it is, of course, wool. So I think the original one was bigger, but it was also knit out of linen and this is wool. So. I'm happy with it. It's just a simple, you know, little purse type bag that I can, you know, throw a few things in and it'll be perfect. So that will probably get finished this week. And the other thing I've been working on is my Trillion, which I said I was going to cast on to take to Vogue to knit on the train and, you know, while sitting around at Vogue. And this is out of another Crafty Girl Strong Sock in the I Can Fix It colorway and it's really really pretty. I really like how it's turning out. I really like the striping. I'm not a huge fan of pooling but I can put up with a little bit of it. So it's coming along really quickly. It's a really fast knit uh, and I'm liking it. So yay for that. I'm in the middle of the row. I had started recording and then realized I forgot the bag, so luckily I hadn't gotten too far and I just started over. Anyway, that's it for On the Island. Uh, I've got some kind of my next batch planned, but um, this is what I've been working on kind of in between as a palette cleanser, if you will. And the only thing that has set sail is my sweater, which you saw last week, but I didn't have the buttons and everything sewn on. I don't even think I showed it last week because it was blocking. Yes, so now it's done blocking, obviously. I'm wearing it. Ta-da! This is the Tea Leaves Cardigan by Melissa Labar. And it's got these nice 
kind of ruching up on the top. And then it's got garter on the wrists and garter on the bottom. Can't see that. Anyway, and the original only has you button it. I think there's like two or three buttons right here. And then the bottom is open. I prefer to have my cardigans buttoned all the way because it's just personal preference. So I did add buttons all the way down. Okay, let me take it off and show it to you. Um, but here you can see it on. It's nicely blocked. I did add some waist shaping. The original pattern does not have that. But I think I've talked about that before. And now I awkwardly take off my sweater. <laughs> ah, there we go. There we go. I like my my sleeves really long, so they're a little harder to take off. So here is the up close of the sweater. I'm really happy with how it turned out. So as you can see, the button band is a little darker, uh, but I don't mind. I actually like that. And I added, as I said, I added a ring around the top in that darker yarn. That's really hard to see. I'm sorry. It's a really thin, like, cast on, bind off, basically. And um, so here's the ribbon that I was talking about last week, that I showed last week that I got. And that's on the back of the button part. And it really adds stability and helps with a lot of things. So that's a trick I think I learned from the Knit More Girls. I know they have a tutorial, I think, on YouTube about how to do that. And that really helps add stability to the button band. So that is finished. Ta da! And I still need to write up my changes and pattern notes and put them on Ravelry. So those will be up there eventually. Oh, the other thing that I wanted to show that's kind of in the finished object department is I finally put buttons on my Ginny cardigan. I know, it's been way too long. And. <laughs> I knit this sweater in June, May, May, June, something like that. Anyway, I finally had buttons, or added buttons. I had buttons for a while. And the reason I waited so long is that the original buttonholes were too small for the buttons. I think they were just one yarn over. Um, and they just, they weren't big enough. And um, so I just kind of kept putting it off and putting it off, and I had bought these gorgeous buttons in Prague when I was there and they were perfect and I just never sewed them on. They're just wood buttons. They're not super fancy or expensive. They're just simple wood buttons. And um, I avoided sewing them on because if I sewed the buttons on I couldn't wear, I couldn't button it which just seems silly. But I had an idea. One of my really good friends has a sewing machine that has an automatic automatic buttonhole maker. I had this brilliant idea that if I sewed grow grain ribbon on the back of not only the button half of the button band, but the buttonhole part of the button band, and then use his automatic buttonhole maker to make buttonholes, that I wouldn't have to rip out the button band, which then made you meant I had to knit, rip out the neck line and then the button band and it was just really complicated and it's a single ply yarn so trying to rip it out would have been a pain in the butt so my brilliant plan worked which I was really excited about so I sewed ribbon on the hat both parts up here so you can see it's on both and then I sewed the buttons on well actually no I sewed I did the button holes first key thing. I'll talk about that in a bit. And he just put, um, I just said, you know, make a buttonhole where the buttonholes were already because I had already, you know, measured and, uh, you know, umpteen times to figure out where the buttonholes needed to be. And um, I said, make a buttonhole where the buttonholes are. So that made it easy for him, which was nice. And so that's what he did. You can see it better on the back. I mean, it looks like a commercial buttonhole. And on the front, it just looks really nice. Um, you know, sometimes it stretched the knitted fabric just a little bit, but you really can't see it. 
at all. I mean, from afar, you can't really see it, which is really awesome. And now the buttons fit in perfectly. The amazing part about the button hole maker is that you stick the button in it, and so it makes the button hole for that button. So your button holes are the perfect size, which I think is brilliant. I saw that and I was like, what? Kind of mind blowing. So yay, I finally have buttons and I can finally button up my sweater. So ta-da! What is going on with that one? Okay, there we go. Ta-da! And one tip that I will share about sewing on buttons, um, or at least button, oh, well, let's start with the ribbon, because that's what you start with. The way I did it is I got my blocking mats out, and I just kind of laid the sweater out. You know, I, it had been washed and blocked and kind of dried. I mean, this one I've worn quite a few times. So I laid it out, kind of how I would wear it, and then pinned it with uh, blocking pins down so that it was the correct length. And I didn't do this with my first sweater and I kind of wish I had. And so I may redo it. But you know, I made sure that both sides were the same length. Well, especially since I'm going to be sewing ribbon to both sides. So they're both laid out there and I pinned them down next to each other. And then I, you know, put the ribbon out and then I used straight pins or you can use even blocking T-pins and pinned the ribbon to the knitted fabric kind of all the way up so that it was even. And then I started, um, you know, sewing it around. I'm not going to go into a tutorial now unless people want me to do that at another time. But having that pinned out on a blocking mat um, while you're pinning the ribbon to the button band really helps in making sure that you have it even and that it's the correct length. Because what I've realized with my first sweater is that I sewed it just a little short I did have to, actually, I think I sewed that one twice. I sewed it really short, and then I sewed it too long, and then I kind of shrunk it. Just It's just a little shorter than I'd like it. So it just means that um, when you have it buttoned, that the, the thing space in between the buttonholes puckers just a little bit because there's more fabric here on the front part than there is on the back part, so it puckers a little bit. So having them the same length is really nice. And uh, this is my Ginny cardigan, if you hadn't seen this one before. It's got the owls on the back, and it's out of Malabrigo. Gosh, I don't know. It's their worst. It's not their worsted. It's their other single ply. Hi, Pan. Can you come and join me? This is Pan. Say hi, Pan. No, no, you can't go up there. No, no, no. <laughs> extreme close-up of the cat. You gonna sit? You can sit. So that's my little tip. Oh, about the buttonholes. So once you've pinned it out and got all of your, you know, your ribbon sewed on, um, I pin the buttonhole band over it and use locking stitch markers to go into all of the buttonholes and kind of pick up one stitch, maybe two, on the on the bottom side without picking up any of the the top the button hole band you want to pick up stitches on the button side of the button band and um, and you do that all the way down and then you just peel the button hole band away just like you know it'll come out the button the locking stitch marker should just go you know straight through the button holes so that's kind of the idea and then you know exactly where to put your buttons which is fantastic, so that you don't end up with wonky things where some of your buttons are too close together, or too far apart, or whatever. It's just an easy, foolproof way to do it, is that you have your buttonholes and you pin them right where you want your buttons. It's really easy. It's kind of a cheater way of doing it, rather than measuring it, which is just way too much work. So that's my thought on sweaters for the moment. Um, I have plans on knitting more sweaters. Actually, why don't we talk about the sweater thing? I'll, there's more detail. Hold on. So, while I was at Vogue Knitting Live, I went to a special event put on by Save the Children, which is a charity organization. Ta-da! This is my special event booklet thing. 
and they're a charity organization that raises money to help children around the world and in the U.S., which is really awesome. They do a lot of amazing things. They do a lot of things, you know, creating schools or, you know, training teachers or helping with, you know, kids get, you know, medical care or a lot of amazing things. I mean, I could list them forever, but they were really cool. I, they're really nice, too. Um, I talked with one of the girls for a really long time. And then I saw her again. I saw her. So the event was yesterday at Vogue Knitting. And then I saw her again today. I was like, hey. So we're, we're good friends now. Yeah. Anyway, enough about that. So I went to this event that I was invited to. And uh, what they're doing is they've started this, um, this campaign in the U.S. They've done it in um, Britain, U.K. Uh, I think it's all of the U.K., not just Britain. And for the, a few years now. And they're just launching it in the U.S. and in Canada. And so my Canadian viewers can be part of it over there. Uh, other countries can participate too. There's nothing against that. <laughs> it's just something they're really launching in the U.S. And their campaign is called Make the World Better with a Sweater. And it's really fun. So their idea is that um, in the month of December, specifically December 12th, it's kind of the sweater day, is to wear a sweater. It's that simple. Do, um, wear a sweater and donate five dollars to make the world or to save the children and share the joy there's a lot of there's a lot more complicated things are not really complicated but more fun activities that you can do surrounding that but that's the their basic idea and um, so I'm gonna be talking about that more on the podcast a little later but I wanted to touch on that now um, but it is something we're going to do as maybe a knit along for sweaters, maybe any size sweater. It doesn't have to be a large one, like you sized or person. You know, it can be baby sweater or Christmas ornament sweater. I mean, those don't sound as daunting. So we'll talk about that more in a little bit. But I wanted to share that. So there's also goodies inside the bag, and there will be prizes. And uh, all right. So let's see. That's what set sail. Oh, it's. We're on to from the mainland. Things I got at Vogue Knitting Live. So I did get some goodies from Save the Children. I guess we'll just talk about those. Uh, one of the things they said you could do is host an ugly sweater party, which I think sounds really fun, and um, have everyone donate $5 and then have a party with ugly sweaters. It kind of sounds fun. So they gave out this ugly sweater kit, instant ugly sweater. It's these, they're kind of adorable, but these, they're pins. They're like ping bat buttons that you can put on your sweater in ridiculous ways. That's what makes the sweater ugly. I think one of these might be okay on your sweater, but all of them together in weird places, kind of hilarious. So I got my ugly sweater kit. I got um, some yarn, some very shimmery yarn. I don't know if you can see that shimmer. It's really kind of amazing. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. It might become prizes. It's really soft. I don't know what kind of yarn it is, but... Ooh, shimmery. I got a bag. Like a drawstring... Ta-da! Bag. With a zipper pocket on the front. And I realized this is for, like, headphone cords. You could also use it as like a knitting grommet to put your yarn in the outside and then pull yarn out. Yep, everything's a project bag. So that was kind of fun. I also got a one of those squeezable stress reliever ball things, but I think the cat has already claimed that as a toy. It's been rolling around on the floor since yesterday. So that is that. And... Um, yeah, hold on, let me get this out. So I got to meet a lot of really cool people at this tea event. There were um, some other knitting bloggers slash podcasters, and there were also some parenting bloggers, because um, there's ways to get involved that way as well. And it was really funny, because one, uh, one of my viewers, I didn't ask her if I could say your name, but you'll know who you are when I finish talking about this. Uh, I think Vogue had 
uh, posted a picture on Instagram of the sweater garland that I'm about to show. And she had tagged me and said, oh, this would be perfect for the, you know, the garland thing I'm going to put behind me when I eventually knit enough things to go on it. And I just thought that was, that was really funny because I had just been invited to this tea where they gave me the pattern for said sweater garland. So here it is. So these are the kinds of sweaters you could knit as part of this campaign. And um, yeah, so there's that pattern. And they also gave out, what was the other pattern? You could do a phone sweater, which I thought was really cute. And, um, or any sweater, but those are the two patterns that they, they gave us. So I'm going to be making this, or at least some of them from here. That's my plan. It's a great way to use up scraps or test some, you know, stitch patterns or whatever. So let's see. They gave me some ideas that I'm going to share with you of ways that we can get involved in this. All right, so there are lots of ways we can do this knit along or event along, or I don't know what we're going to call it, charity along, something. Anyway, um, one thing you could do on December 12th, which is kind of the sweater day, is the day that they're going to have basically a social media campaign behind this. You know, you post a picture of you in your sweater or, you know, something relating to a sweater, and they're going to have, if you tag them, they will, um, you know, repost it on their Twitter or website and have just a stream of pictures from everyone all over the world in their sweaters. And kind of to raise awareness for Save the Children is the way that they're doing this. Um, there are other, another way to get involved is to create a sweater in... Um, in honor of someone who you think makes the world a better place. Uh, you know, that's part of the make the world better with a sweater campaign. So maybe you knit a sweater for someone who you think makes the world a better place. It doesn't have to be full size. It could be, you know, Christmas tree ornament size. So don't don't be afraid. <laughs> We're not going to make this a sweater garment knit along. Although November is knit a sweater in a month. Month. So you could, you know, tag along with that too. Uh... There will be a $50 gift certificate to, I think it's Webs, which is amazing. And that's part of the Pins and Needles Challenge, which is uh, November 12th to December 12th. So I'll talk about that a little more maybe next week. But think about some sweaters. Think about sweaters, and we'll, we'll start a, a, a thread on the the group and you can ask questions about save the children or how this is going to work and I'm still trying to figure it out I learned a ton yesterday at the tea and so I'm trying to share that with you in the most coherent way possible even though I don't totally understand it so we'll, we'll figure it out together right it'll be fun so that's what I got Saturday for that let's see this these are other things I got Saturday was I stopped by the um Lilyman Fiber Arts booth, which was really fun, and I got to meet Steve and Andy, because they were both there, and if you don't know, Steve has a podcast called Dramatic Knits, and he and his friend Callie do a terrific job, and I love watching them. They're in central Illinois, so they're a fellow Illinois podcaster, and I've been watching them for a very long time. They're one of my favorites, so hello, Steve and Callie. And I had a really had a fun time hanging out with them in their booth for a little while. And they're just as awesome in person as they are virtually, which was kind of nice, you know. Some people, you know, put on a nice front, but they're very genuine and very, very cool. So, of course, I had to get more of their yarn. And I got, that's their, uh, their logo, which I just think is so cool. And their website, leadingmenfiberarts.bigcartel.com. And I got two skeins of their Dramaturg, which is their DK base. And it's in the colorway Poseidon. And it's absolutely beautiful. I think it's going to be a hat and a cowl. 
I may actually do, do you remember a couple weeks ago I was talking about a design I've been working on? This may be it right here. We'll see. I realized I wanted it in a thicker yarn. I really liked that Lost City Knits yarn, but it was too thin. I needed like a DK or a sport. So I'm going to try that out. Oh, today I stopped back by there and I realized I had, I've knit a whole bunch of stuff out of their yarn, but I've never knit socks and I really wanted some. So I got some of their callback, which is um, sport weight in Apocalypse, which is this bright tealy aqua and red. And I just thought that's so cool. I love these two colors together. I'm not a huge red person, but I really like it paired with a light blue. I don't know what it is about these two colors, but it's one of my favorite color combinations. So I'm really excited about that. And I also ordered a sweater's worth of yarn for my husband because he asked for a sweater in black. Because for work, he has to wear black on top. So I said, sure, why not? And I knew that Steve and Andy had a really nice black. It's really hard to dye black. And they're black. I, they had some in the, in the booth, and I took a look at it, and it's gorgeous. It's not solid, solid black. But it's very, and it, but it's not a dark, dark gray, which is what happens with a lot of, um, you know, hand dyed blacks or even commercial blacks. Um, they're just a really dark, dark gray, which is not what I was looking for. I was looking for a black, and so theirs really has that depth that black has, um, without being horrific to knit for miles and miles and miles. So we'll see that in the future. I, I, I post or I submitted a custom order so they're going to dye that up kind of all as a dye lot and then ship it to me so thanks guys i'm looking forward to that and let's see yesterday oh i stopped by the lost or not lost city that's the neighborhood fiber company because i had heard such amazing things about them and i wanted to try their yarn and i got this very nice gray in a sport weight it's their Studio Sport, so it's 100% Superwash Merino, and Charles Center is the colorway. And this is Neighborhood Fiber Company. And so I'm pretty excited. I don't have a whole lot of sport weight, I decided, and so I thought I'm going to try some things in sport weight. So it's a very generous skein. It's 355 yards. So I don't, I don't think it's going to be socks. I think it's going to be a hat and a cowl or something like that. And the only other yarn thing I got was some Quince and Company, which is something I'd been wanting to try for a very long time. And one of the booths had it, so I thought, sweet, I'm getting some. So I got two skeins of Chickadee in River, which is this darker blue, and Bird's Egg, which is this lighter blue. And I'm going to do a colorwork hat. I don't know which one yet. That's my plan. So I'm really excited. I couldn't decide. And the yardage isn't, there isn't, there's only 181 yards in each skein. And they're very reasonably priced too. Um, so buying two skeins wasn't, um, wasn't terrible, which was nice. Because I'm like, well, if they're each $14, I'm not going to buy mm -hmm. two skeins of it to make a hat. It kind of seemed ridiculous. But I think they were like $8 a piece. So that seemed very reasonable to me. What do you think, buddy? The cat's checking out all the yarn up here. I don't blame him. All right. Well, that's it for yarn things that I got. Um, I also bought the early fall edition of Vogue knitting because I plan on making this. Oh, yeah. Check that out. It's awesome. Ta-da! It's a fitted waistcoat by Franklin Habit, who I got to meet today. Oh yeah. So I'm really excited about that. So that will be coming eventually. And uh, But there were a lot of other cool things and they were selling these for five bucks. So I was like, hmm, sounds good. 
Oh, I also got some pins from Leading Men Fiber Arts. Got their Leading Men Fiber Arts pin and their Dramatic Knits pin. I'm going to add that to my pin collection. All right, so what else did I get? Oh, that's what else I got. I got a bag. This is the first thing I got. This is a yarn pot bag. Of course, I've already started putting things in. I'll take them out to show it to you. This is a bag by Yarn Pop, and I've gotten one of their uh, bags before, the owl bag that I have. And it's got a grommet here on the front that you can see, and it also has a grommet on the back. And the awesome thing, here I'll turn this inside out so you can kind of see what's going on. This is their gadgety bag, which I, this is one of the things I went to get because I knew that they were going to be there and I really wanted one of these types of bags. This is awesome yellow inside. It's so cheery and it's got a purple zipper. I didn't realize that when I bought it. I realized it later, which I just think is so fun. Anyway, so on the inside of the bag, there's a grommet on this side, as you can see. And there's a zippered pocket on this side. And it's a generous pocket, which of course I already have things in. And that's where the grommet is, is inside this pocket. And the reason for that is um, so that you can put your phone or other gadgety device in here and have your headphones come out of this grommet. And then you can have your knitting project in the rest of the bag. try to explain this. You have your, your knitting project in the rest of the bag and have you know your yarn come out this side. Or if you're doing two at a time socks you can have you know you can use this as kind of a, a splitter and have one skein on this side and one skein on this side and have them pull out opposite sides of the bag. So there's many options with this. I'm really excited about this bag. I've already started using it obviously. And it's a perfect size for socks or a shawl or a, a you know a smaller project. It's not huge, but I really like that. And one thing I've learned about these bags is that because at first I was concerned that well, if my project is coming out of the grommet, then I can't ever stick my project in the bag. But you can. So. I hear the pro I started the project before I had the bag, so it's not through the grommet. But what, what you can do is pan. I need that. No. Messing up my demonstration. Seriously, cat. So here's my yarn. There's a little place to put it right there at the end of the zipper. So when you zip it, it doesn't snag your yarn. There's a little hole there, you can kind of see it. So what happens if you have things coming out of the grommet is you can stick them in the bag and put your yarn in that little puka, as we would say in Hawaii, and zip it closed and it won't hurt your yarn. So there's your solution if you were wondering about that. And my trillion is living in there at the moment because it matches and I like things to match. The yellow and the yarn matches the yellow in the bag, which I just think is so cheery. Plus I like having that pocket on the inside. So that is the bag I got. And the other things I got were today, I went to a, um, a lecture by Susan B. Anderson about knitting toys. And she was giving out these needles, so I got a pair of size 6 straight needles add to my collection. And uh, she was doing a lecture on knitted toys, uh, which was one of the reasons I knit Chloe. I can show her again. She's hiding in my bag here. Come on, Chloe, it's time to come say hi. Just got a little squished. Let's make her look good. So, here is Chloe, in case you didn't get to meet her last week. Ta-da! Dee 
exciting. I did um, put a darker color on her lips because I thought that stained out more than the lighter color. So that's the only thing I think that's changed since last week. Ta-da! And um, so that was really exciting. And Susan loved her, which was really cool that I got to show her something that I knitted out of one of her patterns from one of her books. And she did a, a whole talk about knitted toys and how she got started knitting toys and things she likes about knitting toys and tips and tricks for knitting toys. And it was really fun. Uh, she is just as lovely and sweet in person as she appears to be online, which was kind of amazing. And <laughs> I was, I, I fangirled a little bit because she's kind of amazing. But she said, she's like, oh, you have a podcast, don't you? I'm like, yeah. She's like, oh, I've seen you. I was like, really? This kind of made me really self-conscious about everything I said on the podcast. So if you're watching, Susan B. Anderson, hello. Nice to have you. And uh, Chloe says hi. She said it was very nice to meet you today. And uh, yeah. She, one of the things she talked about was um, how when you do their face, some it's okay to redo it. It's okay to rip it out and redo it as many times as you need to until it looks right. And that really hit home with me because with Chloe's face, I think I did the eyebrows four or five times to get them exactly how I wanted them. And it, like one side would look right and then the other side would look funky and then I'd fix that side and then the other side wouldn't match it and then so I went back and forth and finally got the eyebrows and the eyelashes to look right. So I'm really happy with how they turned out. And uh, but you know even then I took the lips out and redid the color because I didn't like you know it just wasn't standing out enough for me. You think it's right Chloe? She agrees. So I'm really happy with how she turned out. But it's definitely worth, you know, taking your time and, you know, redoing things until they're exactly how you want them. Because that, that's really what gives the toys personality is their face. I mean, also, you know, things about them. You know, if they're chubby, then they kind of got a chubby personality. But, you know, or whatever. You know, sometimes it's where their arms are, where their legs are. But their face, you know, really adds a lot of personality. And if it's not speaking to you in a way that you want it to for that particular toy, then it's worth ripping it out and doing it right. I mean, it's worth that with any knitting. You know, if, you, if it's worth doing, it's worth doing right. You'll always regret not ripping it out, but you'll never regret ripping it out and doing it correctly. I've learned this a lot. Uh, sometimes it's painful to spend all the time unknitting things that you've spent so much time knitting. But it's, it's worth it in the end to have it done right. So I went and listened to Susan B. Anderson and then talked to her afterward. And I got her to sign my Spud and Chloe book. So now inside it says, Hi, Lucia! Let's see if I can get that one. Happy farm knitting, Susan B. Anderson. And this is Vogue Knitting Live 2014. So I'm really excited about that. And the coolest thing happened, I won a book. She did a prize drawing at the end uh, for some of her books or some yarn or some other things. And uh, I won a book, Itty Bitty Nursery. So I'm really excited. I got her to sign this one too. I was like, why not? It's kind of cool. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> what? How often am I going to see Susan B. Anderson? Hopefully more often, because she's really sweet, and I, I really hope to see her again. But I was really excited to win this book. So I think I have three books by her now. I think I have Itty Bitty Toys as well. Um, so, yay! I don't know a whole lot of babies, but now I have things that I can knit for babies. I might just knit them for myself, you know. I think you're supposed to knit these things for kids, but whatever. She was, I think another funny thing she said was that Adults appreciate toys just as much as the kids do, if not more. You know, some people collect certain animals, and so knitting them something, you know, in that animal is really, it's a really sweet thing to do, and it's not as high commitment as, well, maybe not as high commitment, but you don't have to worry about fit, you know, if you're knitting them a, you know, a 
scarf or a hat or something, you know, if it fits with their wardrobe or if they like it. Whereas if you knit them a toy that fits in their collection of things that they already collect, then they're going to appreciate it. So it's a, it's a nice thing to knit for someone that, you know, if you don't know what they wear, but you know, oh, they collect chicken figurines, then, you know, I'll knit them a little chicken. Uh, but if you look in all of Susan B. Anderson's book, there is a chicken. She pointed that out today. <laughs> She's like, yeah, in all my books I realized there's a chicken pattern. So if you're looking for chicken patterns, check out Susan B. Anderson. She's got a few. Um, that's it for things I got. The other thing that I did today was I took a class, I know I talked about this before, from Franklin Habit on sneaking and zippers. And it was very helpful. Staking is not nearly as hard as I think everyone makes it out to be. It was very simple. Uh, it was nice to have someone demonstrate it firsthand. He had a very nice way of demonstrating it. He had this giant, like, I won't tell you how he does it because you should take this class. Uh, but he was, he was great. He was really down to earth. He told us lots of funny stories, mainly about his grandmother, um, who taught him to knit and, um, Things that, you know, she would be horrified of just because, you know, back in the olden days they did see things a certain way and now, you know, we do them a little differently and God forbid you do them any other way than that. <laughs> so he was really funny. I had a great time. But I now have a zipper in my little swatch. Do you remember me knitting this swatch? Yes. So now I know how to steek and I know how to put in the zipper successfully. Ta-da! It unzips and it rezips and it doesn't catch anything and yeah it's kind of exciting yeah if you hold it loosely the zipper is kind of hidden but it I don't seem to have any problems with the unzipping and the rezipping so apparently I did it correctly uh, but what I did learn is that because I was wondering what these stripes are so this is the actual pattern and then these are what's called like a bridge. So this is where the steak happens in the middle of this, but this is something that's, you'll notice you don't see it here. Uh, it's something that you do kind of as a preparation for steaking as you're knitting something. Um, you can also, I guess you could do an afterthought steak, but steaking does take up a, you know, a significant portion of fabric. So you don't really want to not plan on doing it. And, but it was really simple. Um, I was kind of amazed at how simple it was. Um, the hardest part was that I realized that the, the yarn that I had brought to do the the crochet, we did a crochet steek. Um, so you just do like a single crochet up and then you up the other side and then you cut in the middle and that secures it and then you whip stitch it um, to the back here you notice that that's the side I did first and that's the side I did second because it looks much better. It also looks much better on the front. <laughs> uh, and it was really simple, but the yarn I brought um, kept untwisting. Another interesting thing that he said is that a lot of yarns are spun with knitters in mind, not with crocheters, because the action of crocheting actually unspins, unplies the yarn. Because it's just the action. So crocheting up this chain, I was really, you know, my yarn, I kept having to like twist it to put twist in it so that it wouldn't come apart when I was trying to pull it through. So use a very tightly plied yarn. Or use a yarn that's meant for crochet. They do make yarns specifically for crochet and they are spun and plied in the opposite direction than yarns for knitters. Which I thought was a very interesting thing. Never knew that. So there's your random fact for today. There are specific yarns for knitters and specific yarns for, for crocheters. And there's a reason, which I thought was crazy until I started crocheting with a knitting yarn and it just came applied in like three stitches. It wasn't like, you know, halfway up I was, you know, becoming unplied. It was, it was very apparent. So... I now know how to do a zipper. So the reason he has you do all of these 
bridges is that you can now practice multiple times on this single swatch. So I may do that just to get the motions down, but it was really rather simple of just, you know, crocheting the chain up. And basically that secures both sides, so when you cut in the middle, nothing falls apart. And there are many ways of doing seeks. He did explain some other ways, but he said this was the simplest way that he's figured out, and it works. There are other ways, and he said there's nothing wrong with those ways. He's tried a lot of ways, um, but this is the, the most simplest way that he's found. And um, yeah, this side I did sew down much better. Um, this one, you can see that edge of the thing. You can also see some of my thread. Um, but yeah. The back of my zipper is kind of ugly. We used red thread just so it was easy to see. And uh, I learned a lot in this class. He also um, talked a bit about the, the waistcoat pattern, the vest pattern, which was really helpful um, for me, who was planning on knitting said vest. And um, so he had some tips and tricks for that that he just kind of put in there. And at the end, I told him, hey, I plan on knitting that. And he's like, oh, here's some more tips. And he's, you know, we just talked for a little bit. So he's really sweet and really awesome. So if you have a chance to take a class from him, do it. You won't regret it. It was really fun. I'm really glad I decided to do it. And that was, that was the first knitting class I've ever taken, like actual knitting class, except for my grandmother. And uh, it was totally worth it. It was so much fun. I learned a lot, obviously, about the fact that there are different yarns for knitting and crochet. Who knew? And uh, yeah, got my Harry Potter little thing here. We were we were coming up with funny things to do with it, but I like the headband idea. So I might just wear it around like a headband. Yeah, rock the headband style. You could also wear it as a cowl, but it's kind of kind of short for that. I'd have to deal with the ends of the zippers. He did tell us how to do it, I just didn't do it in class, so I'll do that later. Or maybe not, maybe I'll get a different zipper and try it on a different section and uh, hopefully do a better job. But I did all right. I was pretty impressed with myself. It doesn't look so terrible, <laughs> which is good. I'm glad practice on a swatch, that was, that was another thing he was saying. He's like, if you're afraid of doing something, you know, practice on a swatch before you do it on a full garment. And uh, let's see what else we got. I think that is it for today. I have been rambling for a very long time. So I will be quiet now, um, at least for the camera. And have a great week. And I look forward to talking to you next week. Bye!